Let all the people say amen. Let all the people say amen again. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Let us worship the Lord today.
all pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you just to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for leading us on the way. Thank you too for protecting us. Even though we didn't deserve it, you still protect us. Lord, for that we just say thank you. Thank you. For this bless the whole church. Trust all the members here. Bless our pastor. Put the word in his mouth so he can give it to us, dear Lord. Bless, bless the pastor family. Bless all the church members. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We all stand for the reading of the church. Jesus, Father, have been led as we believe in the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. We do now in the person of God, angels, and this assembly most solemn and joyful in and into covenant with one another and one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of ministry, the expense of the church, and the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to, regular, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance. To all serve respectively in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. To avoid all talent, backbite, and excessive anger. To abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love. To remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech. To, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules and Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we, we will as soon as possible, possible unite, unite with some other church, so we can hear our spirit's covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought us again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, to be power and glory forever. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading. promises of God is my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest heart will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on 
Everybody in the building glad about it today. If the Lord never does anything else for us, how many know he's already done enough? Glory to God. say a very amen behind that. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. How many of you have your bulletin this morning, or your newsletter, I should say? If you look at the newsletter, there is a very beautiful, talented, good-looking woman on the front cover. And you have a chance to see who that young lady is. I want to tell you, she grew up in Second Baptist Church. Amen. Her parents are members of Second Baptist Church. Amen. Matter of fact, her father is the trustee, head trustee Amen. of our trustee board. Amen. And her mother is the beautiful woman that sings in the choir, has that gorgeous voice. Amen. Now, Lisa Robinson is going to be our speaker for our uh, scholarship banquet this coming Friday. And I must tell you, I am a little disappointed. Actually, I'm disappointed in some of you because you, many of you have not purchased a ticket. Many years ago, Pastor Hopkins set up the scholarship program to support young folks from our church who want to matriculate at post-secondary institutions. 
and it, it's been going wonderfully for a long, long time. This year we have, and I made a commitment thus far, based upon the number of tickets that we have sold, and it hasn't met our committee's expectation as of yet, right around about 137. I was approached this morning by a member who said a few persons have asked for their money back because there is, I don't want to say a conflict, but I know Sister Robeson passed away and her funeral will be that Saturday, but our bank was that Friday night. So I just want to say, unfortunately, we cannot give money back for those of you who have purchased tickets because I made a commitment to the hotel for X number of, of, of persons are going to be attending. Now, if you insist, we will give you your money back because we don't want to create enemies. Uh, and we will simply absorb the loss, but it will hurt our scholarship program. So I'd like to just emphasize, if you have not had a chance to purchase a ticket, you're going to miss a treat. I was talking with Lisa's mother yesterday, Sister Robinson, who called up and said, baby, what you going to talk about? I ain't going to tell you. Come to the banquet and you'll find out. So even Brother Robinson doesn't know. Sister Robinson doesn't know. But you will know if you come to the banquet. So please, I want to emphasize, please see me or a member of our committee after church to get your ticket. Thank you very much. Good morning, second. Good morning. Join us on Wednesdays for Bible study at 12 and 7 p.m. Please feel free to invite your family and friends to join us for this exciting study of Romans. Members, the work for the church directory is extensive, but we are on target to meet our delivery date of the first Sunday in August. A vital part of the directory is the names, addresses, and phone numbers. Please make sure your information is up to date. Grab an address form in the vestibule table or send a text to 734-216-0893. Please get this done immediately. Thank you for your cooperation. Support our Second Baptist Youth Ministry and get your deep vintage t-shirts. Please see Lynette Burrell, Coretta Hugh, and or Bonnie Taylor for your shirt. New Jerusalem Baptist Church invites second to Reverend William J. Applin's 32nd Pastoral Anniversary Celebration June 11th, 4 p.m. and June 13th through the 15th at 7 p.m. nightly. The Youth Ministry of Christ Temple Baptist Church will have their annual Youth Day on next Sunday, June 11th at 11 o'clock a.m. Members and friends, please read the entire bulletin and announcements page for further particulars of seconds, programs, events, and eva invites. Also, see the vestibule bulletin board for community church activities of our sister churches. Now I'd like to welcome our visitors. As I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing through the entire welcome. We have Brian Robertson visiting with us today. Yeah. And if there are any other visitors that did not have a chance to get, fill out a card, would you please stand? I'd just like to welcome you to Second Baptist Church. Please join in however the spirit may move you today. Our choir has a song for you. I'll turn our further service over to our pastor, Pastor Wallace. Amen. God bless you, Sister Tamer. Thank you all. And to our guests, I think it was Brian. Welcome to Second Baptist. Glad to have you with us. And Miss Davis, glad to have you with us. It's good to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. Amen. I want to echo the sentiments of Dr. Hawkins. We want to support our scholarship banquet. 
We are in prayer for Pastor Roberson. He's in the house today. Uh, he did not want to sit in the pulpit, but we are certainly in prayer for both he and Ron Olive. And we want to be there to support them, be here rather, to support them on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Services for Sister June Roberson will be held. On that Friday night from 5 to 7, the visitation uh, will be held at the Mount Olive Baptist Church. And the family hour will be here Saturday at 10. We want all hands to be on deck. Pastor Roberson and Mount Olive have been there for many of us. And amen, amen. We want to support them. I do want to thank uh, everybody that went with us last Sunday to St. John. We had a glorious time in the Lord uh, celebrating their church anniversary, just having a great time with our brothers and sisters. We are now back on our regular schedule uh, uh, of events. Um, on tomorrow, the final touches will be put on the new elevator, and we thank God for the, for the donors who so generously uh, donated the uh, new elevator. Amen. But un until we have inspection and we give everybody the green light, we want you not to use it until uh, the state inspector comes out. So we're going to ask you to hold off on that for another week or so until they come out and give us the green light. Uh, we also want to remind you to get uh, your youth t-shirts. Amen. Amen. Let's get those. And uh, let's keep uh, Deacon James and his family in prayer in the uh, loss of his aunt. Uh, we want to keep them in prayer. At this time, we're going to ask Reverend Dwayne Henderson to come and lead us in our chant, and then I will come back and lead us in prayer. Oh, 
this time we would ask those who wish to to come to the altar for our altar prayer ushers if you would open the doors and let the worshipers come in amen Saints. And all day. Oh, the angel keep watching. This time we're going to give you an opportunity to say the names of those who you're praying for. Won't you let the Lord know? He can hear all of us at the same time. Join us as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord, for hearing our prayers. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Lord, we know that you're here because you live within us. And we're not just merely existing, God, but you said that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so, God, we thank you for the abundant life that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we thank you, God, that you're able to create in us the right spirit and renew within us, Lord, the right heart, God, that you're able to take away the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Lord, that you're able to make us sensitive to your will, God, and you're able to uh, 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 turn our consciousness toward your word. We thank you, Lord, that, that we know you, God, and that, and, and that you know in us, God, you still choose to love us in spite of our faults, our failings, and our sins. We ask you, Lord, have mercy on us today. God, forgive us for our shortcomings and our, our sin habits, Lord, our ugly ways and words and for uh, the things that came out of us that should not have been. We ask you to have mercy on us, O oh Lord. God, while we're standing around the altar, we've got some concerns. Lord, we've got some prayer requests. You know the things that are on our heart and the concerns that are in our mind. And Lord, we lift it all up to you right now. We heard the songwriter say, take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. So here we are. Unburdening ourselves. Giving our loved ones over to you. Giving our children over to you. Giving our spouses over to you. Giving our illnesses over to you. Giving our financial issues over to you, God. Giving our government and our president over to you. We lay it all at your feet right now in the name of Jesus. We say a special prayer, God, and ask you to give Pastor Garth Robeson strength. Bless his family, God. Bless the Mount Olive family. God, hold him in the hollow of your hand. Wrap your arms around them, Lord, and let them know that you are still in control, Lord. And not only them, God, but we ask you to touch the James family. Lord, somebody else is grieving. Somebody, the funeral is already over, but the pain is still there. Would you not soothe our hearts, God, with your precious Holy Spirit? And then, God, give us the strength to carry out our assignment, our ministry, our mission, our work, God, for your glory, Lord. Until you call us home, give us strength for our journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
How many know his name is excellent? Every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all right. That feels like worship to me. Mm. Glory to God. There's none like him. There's none like him. He's excellent. You can search all over. You'll never find another like Jesus. we love you how we thank you thank you for touching us today thank you for the visitation of your spirit that lives in our hearts thank you that every now and then God we feel you moving on us have your way every day not just today but every day May I walk and I talk and I song praise you every day. God, as we come to your word, shape our hearts to be able to receive that which you have already put together. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise in this house. I'm trying to get to the message, amen. Mm, mm, mm. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. No, we'll sing how great. How great is our God. You're the name of us. You're the name of all names. You are worthy. And my heart will sing. How great is our God. Come on, sing it with me. How great, how great. Sing with me. Oh, we'll sing. 
how great is our God. You're the name above all names. Lord, you're worthy. And our hearts will sing. How great! Sing it with me. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great! Oh, we'll sing. Come on, let's say it one more time. Let the world know how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God, all the world will see. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We serve a mighty good God. And we shouldn't be ashamed to let folk know. Amen. I have a question for you today. I'm wondering if we as Christians who trust God for salvation and eternal life ever doubt that he'll take care of us in our daily lives. How can we trust God with eternity and not trust him with the temporary? How can I trust him with forever, but struggle to trust him with today? Amen. Jesus speaks to those of us that sometimes feel overwhelmed and anxious about life struggles and circumstances and gives us a cure for anxiety. It's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And that's what we want to talk about just for a little while today. The cure for anxiety. The cure for anxiety. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Somebody said to me, Pastor, we, we, we getting up and down like the Catholics. Amen. <laughs> that's all right. Worship is participatory. Amen. Amen. It's not a spectator sport, it's participation, amen. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 25, reading from the English Standard Version, God's precious word. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lily of the field. How they grow neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive. And tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. 
Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God's word. The cure for anxiety. Jesus, in this particular uh, pericope, this passage, does not pull any punches. He, he, he gets right to the point in this particular section of the scripture. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, he tells us, stop being anxious. He gives us what I'd like to call the command of Christ. And the command of Christ simply is, stop worrying about stuff. Uh, if I could put it in the common vernacular of our day, Jesus would tell us, stop tripping. Because sometimes we are overly anxious about stuff that, 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 that God is taking care of. Uh, he, 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 he tells us, don't be anxious, don't have anxiety, because anxiety, I learned from Pastor B.L. Bell, is looking at the possibilities and thinking about the worst that can happen rather than the best that can happen. I learned from my wife a long time ago that, 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 that I had a, a problem. Well, I learned I had several problems, but one of them was uh, that I, I tended to look at the glass. Lord, this glass needs some more water in it. <laughs> but you know, the glass is half full, too. Some of us have a way of looking at life, and we're worried about what's not in the glass, rather than being grateful for what already is in our glass. Right, right. The devil uses anxiety to preoccupy our minds. So that we're not focused on living our faith and carrying out our assignment as a witness for Jesus. Can I tell you that worrying and witnessing don't go together. Fretting and praying don't work together. Agonizing and worshiping don't work together. Jesus tells us to stop worrying about our lives. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3 says, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Rather than being worrying about my problem and looking at the size of my problem, I ought to be looking at the size of our God. And we just got through singing how great is our God. We just got through singing about how excellent he is. How can I be worrying and worshiping at the same time? Can I throw this in on the side? Uh, 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 that's why we ought to have a worshipful mindset. That's why we ought to wake up every day in worship and thank God because, because if I've got my mind occupied with the things of God, I'm not so worried about all the other stuff. What kind of things do we worry about? We worry about food, shelter, and clothing. Have you ever stood in front of a closet full of clothes and been mad because you didn't have nothing to put on? I know I'm not the only one. Don't look around. I'm talking to you, baby. You stood there at the closet. You said to yourself, I ain't got nothing to put on. And had a No, the issue is not you don't have enough to put on. The issue is can I decide in a hurry what I want to wear today? But if you've got more than one outfit, you ought to give God glory. I can remember a time in my life I had two pairs of shoes. One to go to work in and one to go to church in. And then we get mad because we can't figure out which shoe to put on. If all you've got is, 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 is one or two pairs of shoes, but you still have feet and you still got joy, stop worrying. The Pharisees that Jesus is preaching to preaching against their lifestyle, were so preoccupied with material possessions that they never learned to live by faith. And the Bible said that we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. Sight will tell you what you have. Faith will tell you what's in God's pocket. Sight will have you pulling out the lint out of your pocket. Sight will have you reaching into God's pocket. Sight will have you saying, I don't know where my next meal is coming from, but faith will have you saying, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Right, right. The command of Christ is to stop worrying. Well, 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 preacher, you don't know my situation, how, 
how, how can I stop worrying? We need to look at the earthly examples. He, he gives us three earthly examples. The first one, he said, look at the birds of the air. Uh, the, 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 this morning I was driving to the church and I made uh, a left on Harriet and made a, 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 a right on Adams Street. And before I could even get down the block on Adams Street, I saw a dove and I saw a crow and I saw a cardinal and I saw a robin. All of them were just, were just there and I don't know what they were eating, but they were eating something. I've never seen the bird standing around on the corner with a 40 and a pack of Newports complaining about what was going on in their lives. The birds don't worry, they just keep working. What they do is they gather what God has provided. They, they catch insects on the wing in flight. They gather seeds on the ground. They dig the worms up out of the ground. They work all day to feed themselves, but somehow God provides. Have you ever noticed I've never seen a skinny bird? They just gather what God provides. Can I tell you, that's why some of us worry because we ain't working. And I know that's not good English, but, but, but it's true. If you're working, you really don't have that much to worry about because I, I, I have to adjust my lifestyle to my finances. I'm glad I got a witness or two. Sometimes the reason why we're anxious is because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses. But if you looked at the Joneses, and I'm not talking about our Joneses in here, but I'm saying if you looked at the folk you're trying to keep up with, reality, many of them have houses, but it's not a home. They have cars, but they're not really anywhere they want to go. They, 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 they may have a whole lot of stuff, but they're not happy. Uh, uh, what we have to learn to do is work and be satisfied with what God has blessed us with. Oh, Lord, I didn't want to share this testimony, but I guess I'm going to. I spent three years taking a whooping from the Lord trying to drive what I thought I wanted instead of being content with what God already blessed me with. And finally, I said, Lord, I give up. I, 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 I hear you. I'm tired of getting whooped. How long is this woman going to endure? And the other day, the Lord released me from my three years of punishment. But can I tell you that sometimes the reason why we're anxious is because we're trying, to, we're trying to live like somebody else instead of just being content and gathering what God provides. Use what God blesses you with for his glory and you're good and stop worrying about about it our culture brother Brian is designed to keep us worrying about two things am I enough and do I have enough do I have enough friends do I have enough influence sister Davis do I have enough power do I have enough money do I have enough food and the other question is am I enough am I smart enough Am I pretty enough? Am I handsome enough? Am I strong enough? Am I rich enough? Am I thick enough? Am I thin enough? Do people think enough of me? That's, that's why some folk going around using big words that they don't even understand because they're trying to impress people who don't even like them. Our culture encourage us to be preoccupied with what we don't have and what we cannot see when we should rather be trusting God for today. Because anxiety, that's the second example he gives, anxiety does not add to our lives, it takes away. Uh, 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 anxiety does not extend life, it decreases life. Anxiety does not, does, not, does not cause us to have joy, it causes us to have sadness. And Jesus reminds us that we cannot add a single day to our lives by being anxious about it. We cannot add a single hour. We cannot improve our situation by being upset. Sometime it just is what it is. So, why worry about it? 
gives us a third example, flowers. Why are we anxious about clothing? I used to work in retail and I have seen people have full-blown conniptions over clothing. Not the right size, not the right color. Today I was supposed to wear a black suit and put on a gray one. And I got halfway to church and remembered I was supposed to have a black suit on. I kept driving. Because I had an appointment with the Lord in the study. And if I was out of uniform, I was just Pastor Robeson going to have to be out of uniform. Because I forgot. But you know what? I showed up in what I had on and I was glad to be in the service. We get too worried about what we're wearing. And, 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 and we don't even compare to the flowers. If God can dress the flowers that are more beautiful than anything that Oscar de la Rente or, 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 or Joseph Arbud or Kate Spade or anybody else can put together, why are we so worried? God will take care of us. So we got to have proper priorities. That's my last point, and we're going to get out of here. He tells us in verse 31, have the proper priorities. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and our heavenly Father knows that we need them all. Jesus does not say that what we sometimes worry about are not the necessities of life. He does not minimize, Sister Baskin, our necessities, but what he does say is that we have to look at our priorities. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Do you know what we sometimes do? We seek first all of the stuff and we do it through wickedness thinking if we get it all together, then God will bless us. But the reality is, if we put God first, all of the necessities, God will just drop them right off in our lives. And we don't have to go about it the wrong way because God will show us the path of righteousness. The, 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 the better thing to do is not worry, but work and work how? Work toward what's right and what honors God. Well, preacher, I hear this good Sunday school word, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but how can I do that? How do I do it? Can I give you a recipe? Pray. Meditate on God's word. And carry out your assignment. Pray. Meditate on God's word. Carry out your spiritual assignment. Pray. Pray. Meditate on God's word. Carry out your spiritual assignment. Rather than being worried and upset and fussing and fighting, what I need to do is reorder my priorities. And the best way to do that, first of all, is talk to God. Lord, you know what I need. Show me where it is. Show me how to get what I need so I don't have to beg, borrow, steal, prostitute, or pimp myself. Lord, give me a way out so I can honor you with my life. I want to do what's right. I'm reminded today of the children of Israel. The Bible said that God called them to walk out of Egypt. He sent a man by the name of Moses and told Moses, I want you to set my people free. I don't know if we realize there are about one million Israelites, at least 300,000 of them walked out of Egypt with Moses. And they began complaining because They couldn't find enough to eat. God told Moses, tell the people, tomorrow morning uh, they'll have enough to eat. I'm going to cause something uh, that they've never seen before to show up like the dew on the ground. And all they'll have to do in the morning is go out 
and gather up the manna and feed themselves. Tell them just to gather enough for today because if they try to keep more than today's portion, it will spoil. Next morning, the children of Israel went out and looked on the grass. And they saw something uh, that they never seen before. Uh, and they gathered it up and God fed them. But some of them were greedy uh, and tried uh, to keep it until uh, the next day. Uh, and it spoiled and stank. What, what is the lesson for us to learn? It's in the prayer. It's in the prayer. It's in the prayer that we learn how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. We've got to learn how to trust God for what we need right now. We We've got to learn how uh, to trust God uh, for our daily provision. Uh, if the Lord uh, woke us up this morning uh, and started us on our way uh, and gave us a reasonable portion uh, of health and strength uh, and allowed us to have uh, a little bit of food on the table uh, and allowed us to be able uh, to dress ourselves and make our way out to the house of prayer. We ought to be in the business of thanking God for what we have right now. We ought to be in the business of seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other stuff that we're worried about. God, we make a way somehow. I'm wondering today um, if there's anybody in the building uh, that remembers when uh, Jeremiah uh, was running for his life uh, and God called uh, the raven to show up uh, every morning with bread uh, and every evening uh, with a little mead uh, and Jeremiah was able uh, to drink out of the river uh, but one day uh, the river dried up and God moved Jeremiah from the riverside to a widow's house. All she had was a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal. And she was getting ready to fix her last meal. And Jeremiah said, make me a pancake before you make your last cake. And she found out that when we listen to God, God will cause what we have to be more than enough. I want to tell somebody put God first and God will make a way somehow is there anybody in the building today that put God first and you found out that God will make a way somehow I know the Lord will make a way yes he will all I've got to do is put God first. God will make a way. Anybody here made up in your mind that I'm going to give God his and let God take care of the rest. And didn't you give what God said give and God made up the difference. God will God will God will keep his word. Put him first. Because when I put God first, I'm saying to God, I trust you. I'm saying to God, I know you'll make a way. I'm saying to God, Lord, I know you're able. Let me tell you, I was looking at the statistics. There are millions of birds all over the world. And somehow God is able to feed every bird. 
There are millions of beasts that walk the earth. And somehow God is able to feed all of them. Why are we walking around worrying about how I'm going to make it? I'll tell you how you're going to make it. By the grace of God, I made it this far. And we just got through singing, if the Lord never do anything else for me, he's already done enough. God will take care of you. Story is told of an old preacher that had to go out of town and preach. But he was worried about his household. His young son said, Daddy, you said that God was watching over us. Daddy, you said that God would take care of us. You ought to go ahead on and go preach. The preacher went out uh, and preached God's word. Uh, and when he came home, uh, he found out that everything uh, was still all right. Uh, how can we come uh, in here on Sunday uh, and worship God uh, with our hand and our voice uh, and walk out of here and be worried on Monday? Uh, if the Lord uh, has kept you on Sunday, uh, don't we know uh, that God will keep us uh, all week long? Uh, that's why I like the song uh, all day uh, and all night. Uh, God's got angels watching over us. Just put him first. Pray, meditate, and carry out your assignment. Pray, meditate, and carry out your assignment. When it gets dark sometime, pray, meditate, keep working until the Lord say well done. Don't be anxious. God will take care of you. That's why the songwriter wrote that song down. He said, be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will take care of you. I'm, 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 I'm looking at some folk that ought to be waving a hand. Because you know it wasn't you. And I know it wasn't me. I know it wasn't me that kept me all these years. I know it wasn't me that... that that made a way. I know that there are some times in my life when I can look back and I see God's fingerprints on my life and I see the footsteps of God in my life and I know it was nobody but God that kept me this far. My sins were too great, but it kept me. Somebody in here today need to recognize that you're a sinner. We all have done wrong. Everybody in here has done wrong. If you're in the building today and you recognize that you're a sinner but you need the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from your sins, you ought to come give your life to him. Let me explain why he died. He died because we messed up. He was sinless, but we were sinful. And he exchanged his righteousness for our sin. He exchanged his death for our eternal life. And if you're willing to accept Jesus death on the cross as payment for your sins that you might have eternal life with Christ you ought to come give your life to him come on and sing if you're looking for a church home and God confirmed to you this is where you need to be you ought to come be a part of the second Baptist church be a disciple of Jesus Christ won't you come give your life to him today Don't you come, he's calling you.
Why are you waiting? the Lord is calling you, you ought to come. God, he's calling you. God is calling you. He's calling you. Trying to make it up in your mind, but the time is now. Amen. There's none, yet there is still room. We're going to bring what the Lord has provided us with in our offering. Father, we thank you now for the gift and the giver. We ask you to bless those who will follow your word. Give according to what you say, Lord, that you might bless them. You said that you would give seed to the sower. We ask you to plant the harvest of faithfulness in the life of those that have trusted you. Lord, if there's somebody that's struggling between fear and faith and doesn't know God, we ask that you would show them your provision that they might receive the blessing of the giver. We thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you not stand with us as we come to bring our gifts to the Lord? If you're joining us online and you want to give, you can give by going to EasyTide slash YPSI and you can give your gifts there. God bless you. All right, let's bring our gifts with joy. Amen. Please follow the directions of the ushers as they guide us in our giving.
the ushers return to their posts, we're going to prepare ourselves now for the Lord's Supper. We'd ask that everybody uh, just be in a solemn mood and remember what Christ has done for us. Amen. we to ask Reverend Wardell Jones to come give us the scripture, and then Reverend Dion Lawrence will give us the prayer, and then we will serve our the Lord's Supper. Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, his first letter in chapter number 11, beginning at verse number 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Grab someone by the hand, and shall we pray? Dear God, our Father, we come. We come at this moment to remember what you have done for us. What you have done on Calvary, we thank you. For it's by your blood that we are healed. And with your stripes, we are made complete. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. Ask your God to change this instruments from carnal use to spiritual use that these be these be done and decently and in order and when you come you will set us in order we just thank you for your amazing grace that is sufficient for thee that look beyond every one of our faults and met every one of our needs in jesus holy name we do pray amen Wireless mic, handheld wireless mic, please.
Have we missed anyone in the service of the Lord's Supper? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we do this to remember the sacrifice of Christ for our sins and to celebrate his resurrection. The bread symbolizes his body given for us and the juice symbolizes his blood shed for us. Let us commune together. Amen. Amen. Now, last Sunday, your pastor jumped the gun, and uh, we gave the right hand of fellowship to our new members, and we gave the baptismal certificates out. We also will be sending new membership certificates to our new members, our three young ladies. We praise God for you. Amen. Amen. But we're not going to do the right hand of fellowship today. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our closing song and we'll receive the benediction. Amen. What a fellowship. What a fellowship. Oh, Yes, I'm lean. Oh, I'm May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ rest and abide with each heart henceforth and forevermore. And we all said together.